Hey, Garage here. And um, so I'm doing what I normally do and overanalyze and, and whatever stuff. And I'm looking at home efficiency stuff. And uh, one important topic, I got notes here by the way, so I'll keep looking down. Um, one important topic, especially here in the Southwest, I'm in Arizona, is water conservation. We're in a drought, it, it's crazy here. And uh, it's not gonna get any better um, unless we all start doing something to conserve a little bit of water. I've got to admit, I'm first to admit, we are terrible with water in this household. Like we use, we use an insane amount of water after I started looking at the numbers and what all is going on with our household. And I'm one of those guys, I got to admit, I pay the bill, water bill comes in, it gets paid, goes out the door. I don't even look at it really, whatever. And I started doing the maths and uh, yeah, we, we, we got to do better. It's, um, it's kind of disturbing how much water this, uh, this family um, uses. So uh looking into all of this for our family of four in a house we started running those numbers and like i said the numbers are crazy um so for for uh june's water bill um our family of four in a house you know it's got landscape it's a little track home type thing whatever um we use 13,464 gallons of water and that's not even remotely my worst month that's just a normal month for july now that I have a water timer on my sprinkler stuff that's working right, 13,464 gallons in a month. Now, now, now think about that. When you, when you do the math, that's uh, 3,366 gallons per person. All right, that, that's a lot. That's 448 gallons per day that uh, the, the, the family used. And I, I guarantee there's a whole bunch of you out there that are in the exact same boat as I am and that we are and that use this much water. That's 112 freaking gallons per day per person. All right, so that's, that's eye-opening, right? So grab your bill, your water bill, and do, those, do that simple math. Divide it up by how many people you have in your household and how much water you guys are actually using per day, per, per week, per whatever. It, it's it, it's eye-opening. So anyways, I started digging into, uh, you know, how, how are we going to save water? Um, we got to do something better. I think those numbers are ridiculous. I can't even fathom where all that water's going. Uh, so I started digging into things and um, I wanted to make changes that would be realistic. I don't, I'm, I'm not going to be that hippie dude that's going to go for five days without a bath um, to save water. We're not doing that. We're not going to go without our soft water. We like soft water. We're not going to go out, go without reverse osmosis water. I don't want to die an early death. Our water is terrible here in Arizona. So uh, I wanted to find changes that would work for the family, where we could save a whole lot of whole lot of water, that won't really impact us all that much. And uh, let's check it out. Hey, I'm back in the exact same place, in my office, with all this cool equipment that makes me look way smarter than I am. So, first up, first thing we did is we took a look at our shower heads, and uh, we had some very very high flow shower heads they felt great but they were dated and they flowed a lot of water especially because we have very very high uh water pressure here uh where we're at and about 100 psi of water pressure so combine that with a very high flow shower head and it was an invigorating experience but it was wasting a ton of water so we looked up and we found some shower heads that uh, were rated at a much much lower water flow but they were designed to save water and they had settings that um, basically were high pressure. So the water would come out at a much higher pressure without the flow, which saves on water. So we did a bucket test. So we took a five gallon bucket with the old shower heads and um, basically you let water run in um, into the bucket for one minute and then you see how much water you have and that's your gallons per minute of flow for your shower head. Well, these old shower heads that we had, they were flowing around almost six gallons per minute. So every minute you're losing six, ga six gallons of water to take a shower. And now you get people that want to take long showers, like a 10 minute shower could be 60 gallons. Um, <laughs> that That's crazy. And uh, then we'd have certain kids in the household like to take 30 minute showers or longer. And you know what, if that happens every now and again, I don't, I don't care. But uh, bottom line is that's a crazy amount of water. So we found these shower heads that we really, really like. There's a link in the video description, check them out. Um, here's a quick little video of what it looks like when they flow. So yeah, uh, we replaced the shower heads. That saved a lot of water. The shower experience is fantastic, kind of as I mentioned in the video. 
and but they're not really using all that much water they're just really high pressure water coming out so I, I do like those a lot very inexpensive and it really really is nice the next thing we did second thing we educated the kids and the family on uh and family members about water usage and don't take a 30 40 minute shower until the hot water completely runs out and um you know we got these little uh, shower timers or little hourglass things that kind of flip over and it kind of just educated them kids had no idea that we were in a drought kids have no idea about water savings and just planting that seed and putting the idea in their head got them thinking about it so they would naturally take shorter showers and the timer little thing was fun so they'd flip it over and um our showers really have gone down drastically so even i catch myself i'll flip the little timer and i'm like all right gotta gotta clean up gotta do my thing and i'm out and it's not even a big deal. It's saving a ton of water and it's not bothering me at all to do it. So um, those were really easy wins. All right, so um, we have an RO system, reverse osmosis system, okay? Now a reverse osmosis is a filtration system that you probably would have under your sink. So many households have them and it gives you good crisp clean drinking water because we have crappy water and people that say we don't have bad water here in Phoenix area in Arizona you guys are crazy you haven't seen what comes out of my filters every six months it is nasty like wow nasty so anyways RO systems are the devil when it comes to um, water usage most people don't realize so there is your clean water which is your product and then you have your wastewater and at way an RO system works I'm not going to go into the techie side of it and the geeky side of it but um for every gallon of clean water that you get out of your RO system, it can produce anywhere from three to say eight gallons of waste water. So if you get your nice one gallon jug of clean, you know, yummy water, you can get up to, depending on your system and who set it up, up to eight gallons of, of bad water, water that just went down your drain. They call that brine. Um, that wastes a crazy amount of water. So I did a little bit of research on how I can reduce that wastewater uh, setup. And I did what they called, or I installed what they call a permeate pump. Now, again, I'm not going into the techie side of it, but it only cost me about $60 to do it yourself. It was super easy to plumb in this permeate pump. Here's a picture of my uh, RO system under the sink. And the permeate pump drastically reduces your wastewater. And it, it's a little hydraulic pump that relieves pressure off your tank while it's filling. Anyways, I, I promise I wasn't going to the nerd side of things. Almost did. But you guys can look it up. So a permeate pump it was like $55, $60, I think, for the parts, everything I needed to install it. I put it in. It reduced my wastewater down below almost one-to-one -one ratio. So a gallon of clean water and a gallon of wastewater. I'm still wasting water, I get that, and it's not going to my plants, I'm not doing that crazy stuff of putting my wastewater in a bucket or doing all this, all these things, right? Um, I'm just saving water from where I was. Now, I'm trying to be better about water, and that's the only goal of what I'm talking about here. So, um, yeah, so uh, wastewater one-to-one, -one, that's going to that's gonna drastically reduce our water bill. All right, so we have this other water wasting thing that uh, many, many, many people have. Uh, it's called a soft water system. So we have pretty darn hard water here in Arizona. And it's kind of water where if you take a shower without a water softener, it feels like your hair has concrete in it or something. It's just your soap doesn't lather. Nothing. It's just it's terrible quality water. But a uh, soft water system uses a lot of water in what they call a regen cycle. Um, 20, 25 gallons of water for every time it regens. Now it was this crazy snowball effect. So we're using so much water in the shower, so much water in our RO system and, and just in our household use that it was causing our RO water to regen. So notice we're on this bad habit. We're using all this water. So now our soft water is using even more water, which it shouldn't be. And that, that makes our water bill go up. That just wastes water. So another part of the RO, um, or not RO, uh, soft water system is you have a setting on it. Most all soft water systems have a setting for how much hardness it's taking out of the water. And ours was defaulted to a factory default of 18, which I come to find out after talking to these people was way, way, way too high, which means it was regenerating far too often and it was eating a ton of salt. And so we ended up, after we did some tests and did some things to figure everything out, we turned it from 18 and right now we're on a setting of 14 
and we're not eating anywhere near the amount of salt because we're not regenerating as much because again the shower heads and drinking water everything in the house has gone down in water usage so it's gone down in water usage so that was a win um, it was a simple setting completely free to do you walk up to your soft water thing and you dial it in um, again there's videos how to how to calibrate your soft water system for your hardness level hopefully yours has a setting for it but um, that's an easy win so check out your soft water So um, this actually was uh, a year ago that I did this one and this saved a huge amount of water because remember how I told you at the beginning of the video 13,000 gallons of water is like our pretty normal July. This month a year ago uh, we used 25,500 gallons of water and we had been using in the 20,000 gallon range the whole summer and I, I just I, I didn't know why. Um, I thought it had because we had the pool you know all this stuff and uh, I was outside doing some landscape stuff and I just happened to hear the drip system come on. Completely random time, not when it was programmed for, it just came on. I was out another time, grass came on. And uh, so I went and I checked the sprinkler timer. I'm like, it was not programmed for those times whatsoever. And I'll go out another day also and I hear it come on. And it was just this old like builder grade orbit sprinkler timer that came with the house. And um, so Long story short, I replaced it. I did try to factory reset it, do a bunch of other stuff. And the thing was still going off whenever it felt like it, not on its program time. So I just replaced it with this really easy to install Rainbird and uh, really easy to set up one. It wasn't very expensive. I, I linked it in the video description. So if you guys want to check it out, um, it was super easy to set up. And that alone, like, uh, gosh, it cut me from like 25,000 gallons a month. You'd think I'd live in a marsh or a mud pit with that much water being put in the dirt, but I, I wasn't. It just was evaporating. But it cut me from like 25,000 a month down to like 15,000 a month, which is still crazy, but that's how much water that bad sprinkler timer was wasting. So check your sprinkler timer. Um, this month, it's not, it doesn't reflect in the bills for this month, but this month, I really took special care to learn how to set up a sprinkler timer because I just had the grass going for, you know, a couple minutes morning, a couple of night, realizing how much water I was actually wasting. I learned how to actually set up a sprinkler timer, tons of good videos on that and kind of dialed all that in. So that's just going to further savings is having your drip system in your grass and that kind of thing uh, set up properly. All right, so we have this other topic here. This one borders on that hippie -ish stuff, like putting a bucket in your shower and all that. I'm not going there. Ugh, I actually kind of went there because I do have a bucket outside. But this one's an easy one to do. It doesn't cost you hardly anything. And it gets you outside, gives you a little bit of workout in the morning, very slight workout, which is good. Um, it is your air conditioning condensate line. So it's a little pipe on the outside of your house. It's dripping water when your air conditioning is running. And our air conditioner runs like six months out of the year here in Arizona. Um, so I thought maybe it produced a gallon of water, two gallons of water a day. Maybe I could use that to water some plants, you know, something like that. And so I put a bucket under it and I had to cut the bucket. You'll see it in this little video. Check this little um, video clip out. And so I put a bucket under it and, um, I started realizing very, very quickly that it was producing like 10 gallons, sometimes more of water per day out, out of just that condensate line. That's a tremendous amount of water that would just go into the ground. And it also gets me out of the house, out of the house. So in the morning I walk out, I empty the bucket. In the afternoon I walk out, I empty the bucket like 6 p.m. So it's like a 6 a.m. and a 6 p.m. thing. I go empty the bucket. I'd like to get some more storage for that, like a 55 gallon drum. I see them come up on offer up for like 20 bucks every now and again. Put a drum out there that I can just get water out of a bucket of water when I need it. But uh, that is crazy how much water that can produce. And since I started doing this bucket thing with the condensate line, it's made like 600 gallons of water that uh, otherwise I would have had to, had to come right from the city. So that that is really cool. Free water. Uh, it's clean water. It's basically off your UVAP coils, out of your air handler, over your AC. And now the way I use it is I have a couple of fruit trees. So on the weekends, I use that to water my fruit trees. On regular days, I actually dump it into the pool and it helps with evap and water for the pool. So again, I'm not, I'm not like some water saving hero here because we use a lot of water still, but that little thing produces a ton of water and um, it's completely free. You just need a five gallon bucket and that's it and you can do it. So uh, that, that was a good win. In closing, so I'm gonna, I'll, I'll probably do a follow up video to, to talk about how much water I saved after I, I fixed up the drip system and programmed it properly. But, um, and I also am thinking about, um, I'm in Arizona, I'm in the desert, right? It's nice to have grass that just sits out there in my backyard. 
why, why do I have grass? Uh, I don't really know. I have to mow it and do stuff with it. And I don't want to put in artificial turf because that's just like putting green carpet in your yard. And I'm sorry, artificial turf lovers. Uh, that's just kind of weird to me. I'm not doing turf. So I think I'm going to actually take out the grass this winter and do um, just do a desert landscape, do some beautiful rock, maybe some cactus, some planters, things like that, and reduce my water footprint even more. And uh, But I'll do a follow-up video on that and see how that helps. But um, I guess the reason why I'm doing this video is, is pay attention to your water, check your toilets, do all those normal things. None of mine were leaking, so I can't speak to that. But... Um, save on water we're, we're we're in a major drought and these little things can make a big difference like i barely spent any money and the first month i already saved three thousand gallons of water now i did a quick little math so in my little town the township area uh we have fifty thousand people if people conserved half of what i did say they conserved 1500 gallons of water uh versus the three thousand i saved in a month even if they did a little bit that's like 75 million gallons of water. So it adds up really, really fast. And um, it doesn't, again, it doesn't take much to figure it out and it saves you money and it's basically doing a solid to the environment for free. Anyways, thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe if this video helped you out at all and I'll catch you later.